Hello, hi everyone. Thank you very much for uh, join me in this uh, chapter uh, supply chain management, the network designs in chapter network design is in the uh, supply chain. Okay. So from uh, this slide, you can uh, I think uh, get some idea. Okay. Uh, we have to develop uh, our network uh, in the in the supply chain. So in this purpose, you can see. Uh, uh, our learning objective our learning objective uh, for uh, today's discussion is about uh, how that we can we have to understand the role of network design eh? the role of uh, network design uh, in uh, supply chain eh? uh, and then uh, identify factors influencing supply chain uh, networks design decision eh? factors influencing uh, supply chain uh, network design decision and then develop a framework for making network design a decision eh? then the use optimization for facility location and uh, capacity allocation uh, decision okay <coughs> So in this chapter, we start with the broad uh, supply chain design discussed in uh, chapter 4 uh, and focus on the fundamental question of uh, facility location, capacity allocation and market allocation when designing a supply chain network. So we identify and uh, discuss the various uh, vectors that influence the facility location, capacity and market allocation decision. So we then uh, establish a framework and discuss various uh, solution methodologies for uh, network decision decision in a supply chain. Okay. <coughs> the supply chain network uh, decision, uh, the network design decision include the uh, assignment of uh, facility role, uh, location of uh, many. many uh, manufacturing, uh, storage or transportation related facilities and uh, uh, allocation of capacity and uh, market to each facility. The supply chain network design decision are, class are classified eh, as uh, you can see from here uh, the facility roles, uh, uh, what role, uh, what process, uh, <coughs> what role that should uh, each facility play, uh, what process are uh, performed uh, at each facility and then facility location uh, uh, classified as a facility location so where should uh, facilities uh, uh, will be uh, located uh, and then uh, capacity allocation uh, how much the capacity uh, should be allocated to each facility uh, market and supply allocation uh, what market should each facility serve uh, uh, which uh, supply uh, source uh, should feed uh, each facility okay so network uh, design decision have a significant impact on performance because they determine the supply chain configuration and set constraint within which the other supply chains uh, driver can be used either to decrease supply chain cost or to increase responsiveness. So the role of network design is you have to revisit design decision after market changes, eh, merger or factor uh, cost changes. So there are a lot of variable, there are a lot of uh, factors that can affect eh, uh, to us uh, uh, to revisit the design decision. Uh, uh, because uh, we know in real market, in real business, there are so many unexpected uh, circumstances or uh, unexpected uh, event will be happen so we have to very dynamics and uh, we have to revisit again a design decision after market change merger or uh, factor cost uh, changes so in this section we as a mind uh, but wide variety of factors that influence uh, network design decision in supply chain 
as you can see from there a few point that's uh, in uh, can be affected uh, uh, can be affected like uh, as you can see from first one is a uh, strategic factors uh, strategic uh, factors so this is one of the very important factor. Uh, a firm competitive strategy has a significant impact on network uh, design decision within the supply chains. Yeah. So firms uh, that focus on cost leadership tend to find the lowest cost location for their manufacturing facilities. Even if that means locating far from the market they serve. So electronics manufacturing service providers such as uh, maybe uh, Flectronic uh, have uh, been successful in providing a low cost electronic assembly by locating their factories in a low cost country such as uh, China. In contrast, firms that focus on responsiveness tend to uh, locate facilities closer uh, to the market and may select a high cost location if this uh, choice allow the first the firm uh, to react quickly to changing market needs. And then as you can see the second one, the technological factors. Uh, technological factors. So, characteristic of uh, available production technologies have a significant impact on network design decision. So, if production technology displays significant economies of scale, uh, so a few high capacity locations are most effective. So, this is the case in the manufacturer of uh, computer chip, for which uh, factories require a large investment. Uh, and the output is relatively un in 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 ex uh, expensive to transport. So as a result, most uh, semiconductor companies build a uh, few uh, high capacity uh, facilities. Yeah. And then uh, macro uh, economic factors, macro economic uh, factors. You see from the macro economic factors can be includes uh, if taxes, uh, uh, tariff. Uh, exchange rate, uh, uh, shipping costs that are not internal to an individual firm. So as glo global trade has increased, macroeconomic factors have had, had a significant influence, influence on the success or failure of the supply chain network. Thus, it is uh, imperative that firm take uh, these factors into account when making a network decision, decision design. Okay. And then uh, another one factor is uh, the political uh, factors. Uh, the political stability of the country consi under consideration plays a significant role in location choice. Uh, so companies uh, prefer to locate facilities in politically stable countries where the rule of commerce uh, and ownership are well defined. So while uh, political risk is hard to quantify, there are some uh, indices, indices, indices such as the a uh, global political risk index uh, uh, that company can use when investing in emerging in in, in emerging a market. Okay. <coughs> and other than that, you can see infrastructure, uh, infrastructure fa uh, factor. Uh. So the availability of good infrastructure is an important uh, prerequisite to uh, locating a facility in a given area. So poor infrastructure adds to the cost of doing business from a given location okay. <clears throat> maybe you can see uh, a few of uh, global companies are located their yeah, uh, factories maybe uh, in, in China near Shanghai near Guangzhou eh? even though this location, this location did not have a lowest uh, labor or land cost because this location had a very good infrastructure and then uh, competitive, uh, competitive factors, eh? competitive factor. So, uh, company must consider competitive strategy, okay, size and location when designing their supply chain network. So, fundamental decision firms make eh, uh, is whether uh, the locate to, to locate their facilities close to to or far from competitor. And then, uh, and 
As you can see from there, uh, customer uh, respond time uh, and local uh, presents. Uh, the firms uh, that uh, target customer who value a short response time must uh, locate close to them. The customer are unlikely to come to a convenience store if they have to travel long distance to get there. It is thus uh, best for a convenience store change to have many stores uh, distributed in an area so most people have a convenient uh, store uh, close to them okay and then uh, logistic and logistic and facilities okay so logistic and facility costs incurred uh, within a supply chain uh, change uh, as the number of facilities uh, their location and capacity uh, capacity allocation change so companies must uh, consider uh, inventory transportation and facility costs when designing their supply chain network okay, okay competitive uh, factors uh, positive uh, externalities uh, uh, between firm Okay, uh, locating to split market, uh, locate to capture largest uh, market share. Uh, this is very Uh, very useful when we have to uh, see uh, the factor that's locating the speed uh, to split the market uh, to split the market okay okay there are some faces you can see from there uh, uh, that's the goal when designing a supply chain work uh, is to maximize the uh, firm's profit while satisfying customer need uh, in terms of demand and responsiveness. So to design an effective uh, network, a manager must consider all of the factors described in uh, previous uh, section that we discussed. A few factors that uh, affect uh, to the uh, design of a supply chain. And of course, uh, those who discuss in chapter four, uh, this uh, before this the chapter that we discussed before this chapter. So global uh, network design decision are made in a four uh, phases, as uh, we can see from here. Uh, so we discuss each phase in a greater uh, greater uh, detail. Now the first one you can see define a supply chain strategy. Uh, define a supply chain strategy or design. Okay. So that means uh, the objective, uh, the objective of first phase of network design is to define a uh, firm's broad supply chain design. So this includes determining the stages in the supply chain and whether each supply chain function will be performed in-house or outsourced. Uh, so first phase, you can see from here, uh, start with a clear definition of the firm's competitive uh, strategy as the set of customer needs and uh, that uh, the supply chain aim to satisfy. So the supply chain strategy then specifies uh, what capability uh, the supply chain network must have uh, to support the competitive uh, strategy. Okay, so you can uh, see in the uh, previous uh, chapter uh, about the com uh, how that supply chain uh, network uh, really support the competitive strategy. So next, uh, manager must uh, forecast the likely evolution of uh, global competition and uh, whether a uh, uh, competitor uh, in each market will be a local or global players yeah. and then uh, manager must also identify a constraint on available market uh, cap uh, capital and whether growth will be accomplished by acquiring existing facilities uh, building new facilities or partnering yeah. so based on the competitive strategy strategy of the firm uh, is resulting supply chain strategy an analysis of the competition, any economies of scale of scope or scope, uh, and any uh, constraint manager must determine the broad supply chain design for uh, the firm. Okay. 
so this uh, figure you can see uh, clearly about uh, this figure uh, uh, to design an effective uh, network uh, I mean you must uh, consider all the factors uh, in this and uh, global uh, network design decision are made eh, in uh, four phases as shown in this figure okay <coughs> Okay, the phase uh, two. You can see from there. Okay, uh, the objective of the second phase of uh, uh, net, uh, network design is to identify a region where uh, facilities, uh, where facilities uh, will be located. Their potential roles and their approximate uh, capacity. So, analysis and analysis of phase uh, two will start with. A forecast uh, of the demand by country origin uh, such uh, forecast must include a measure of the size uh, of the demand and the de determination of the homogeneity, uh, homogeneity or variability uh, of customer requirement across different regions okay. so homogeneous requirements uh, favor large uh, consolidated facilities whereas uh, requirement that vary across countries uh, favor flexible facilities or smaller uh, local, uh, localized and dedicated facilities so the next step is for the manager to identify whether economies of scale or scope uh, can play a significant role in in reducing a uh, cost so given available production technologies if economies of scale or scope are significant it may be better uh, to have a few facilities serving many market for some, for example, uh, maybe uh, semiconductor manufacturers uh, uh, have a few fl a few plan for their uh, global market. So, given the economy of scale in production, uh, if economies of scale or scope are not significant, so it may be bet it may be uh, better for each market to have its own uh, facility. And then uh, you can see the uh, third phase. Uh, uh, we have to select a set of of uh, desirable potential sites. Uh. So the, the objective of phase three is uh, to select uh, a set of desirable potential sites within each region where facilities are to be located. So sites should be selected uh, based on an analysis of infrastructure available uh, availability to support the desired production methodology methodologies yeah. and then so, the uh, fourth phase uh, the objective of this uh, phase four is to select uh, from among the potential site uh, a precise uh, location uh, precise location and capacity allocation for each facility so the network is designed to maximize total profit uh, taking into account the, uh, the expected margin and demand in each market various logistic and facility costs and the taxes and tariff uh, in each uh, location okay. Okay, uh, uh, then uh, managers' uh, goal when locating facilities and allocating uh, capacity uh, should be uh, to maximize the overall uh, profitability of the resulting uh, supply chain network while providing uh, customer with uh, the appropriate responsiveness. So revenues come from the sale of product, uh, whereas costs arise uh, from facilities, uh, labor, transportation, materials, and inventories. The profit of the firm are also affected by taxes and uh, tariff. Ideally, profit after tariff and tax uh, should be maximized when designing a supply chain uh, network. So manager must uh, consider many trade-off uh, during uh, this network design. For example, uh, building many facilities to serve local market reduce transportation costs, 
and provide a fast response but uh, but it increase the facility and inventory cost incurred by the firm okay so manager uh, use network design model in two situation first this model i used to decide uh, on location where facilities will be established and determine uh, the facility uh, to be assigned uh, to each uh, facility so manager must make decision this decision considering a time horizon over which location and capacities will not be altered Second, uh, this model, uh, I used to assign current demand to the uh, available facilities and identify lanes along which uh, product will be uh, transported. So this is the, the following information ideally is available in making the design decision okay. uh, location of supply uh, resources uh, uh, sources and uh, market uh, location of potential facilities uh, site uh, demand forecast by uh, the market uh, facility uh, labor and material cost by site uh, transport transportation cost between each pair of site uh, inventory cost uh, <coughs> inventory uh, cost by site and as a location of quantity uh, uh, sale price of product uh, in different regions like uh, taxes and uh, uh, tariff uh, and then desired response time and other service uh, factor so given this uh, information either gravity model or network optimization mo or model may be used uh, to design the network so we organize the model according to the phase of the uh, network design framework at, at which uh, each model is uh, likely to be uh, useful okay. You can see from here during uh, phase two of the network design framework. Uh, okay, uh, you can see the figure before. Uh, manager consider regional uh, the demand tariff, economy of scale, and aggregate factor uh, cost to decide a region which facility are to be located. So as an example, consider uh, here. Okay. Uh, Let's say uh, Sun Oil, a manufacturer of petrochemical uh, product with worldwide sale, uh, the vice president of supply chain is considering several options to limit uh, demand. Uh, so one possibility is to set up a facility in each region. The advantage of such an approach is that it lower transportation costs and also uh, help avoid duties that may be imposed if product is imported uh, from other region. The disadvantage of this approach is that plants are sized to meet local demand and uh, may not fully exploit uh, economies of scale. So an alternative approach is to consolidate a plant in just a few regions. So this uh, improves economy of scale but increases uh, transportation costs and duties. So during phase 2, the manager must consider this quantifiable trade-off uh, along with non-quantifiable <coughs> factors such as the competitive environment and political risk okay. so as you can see from here uh, network uh, optimization model are useful for manager considering uh, regional reconfiguration -config uh, uh, during phase 2 the first step is to collect the data in a form that can be used for a quantitative model uh, for sun oil uh, you can see from this uh, 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 table uh, this is an example uh, cost uh, data uh, cost data in thousand of dollar and demand data for sun oil actually okay in a few region uh, north america south of america europe asia uh, africa right so this is a, 
uh, when for sun for sun oil the maybe uh, vice president of supply chain decide to view a worldwide demand in term of five region uh, and the data uh, collected uh, are shown in this uh, 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 table uh, annual demand for each of the five region uh, is shown in uh, maybe uh, cells uh, 9 uh, b9 uh, f9 uh, b9 f9 okay b9 uh, and uh, f9 okay okay so cell uh, b4 and uh, F8 uh, contain the variable production, inventory, and transportation costs, including tariff and duties of producing in one region to meet demand in each individual region. So all costs are in thousand of dollars. For example, as shown in cell C4, uh, it costs uh, ninety. Uh, it costs C4. Uh, 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 it costs ni ninety two. Uh, ninety two thousand. Uh, ninety two thousand. Okay, including duties to produce a uh, one million unit in North America and sell them in South Africa. So as shown in C G four, it costs uh, six million in NLY in in annual annualized fixed uh, cost to build a low capacity plant in uh, North America. So observe that the data collected at this uh, stage are at a fairly aggregate level, yeah? a fairly aggregate level. So the, there are uh, fixed as well as uh, variable cost associated with uh, facilities, transportation, and inventory at each uh, facilities. So fixed costs are those that are incurred, uh, not matter how much is uh, produced or shipped from a facility. So variable costs are those that are incurred in a proportion to the quantity produced or shipped uh, from a given facility. So facility, transportation, and inventory costs generally display as economies of skill and the marginal cost decrease uh, as the quantity produced at the facility increase so in the model we consider however all variable costs grow uh, linearly uh, with uh, the quantity produced or ship so sun oil is considering two plant size in each location uh, so low capacity plant can produce a 10 million unit a year uh, whereas high capacity plant can produce maybe 20 million unit a year so as uh, shown in cell h4 and h8 and j4 and j8 uh, respectively so high uh, capacity plants exhibit some economies of scale and have a fixed cost that are less than twice the fixed cost as a low capacity plant as shown in the cell of i4 and i8 so all fixed costs are analyzed uh, the, the president want to Maybe the vice president want to know what the lowest cost uh, network should look like. So to answer this question, we uh, can discuss. Uh, we next uh, the the capacity uh, the capacity uh, the capacitated uh, plants uh, location model, uh, which can be used in this setting. Okay, the capacitated plant uh, location model. Uh, okay. So the capacitated uh, plan location network optimization model require the following input. Eh? You can see from there, uh, uh, N, M, D, J, eh? K, uh, I, eh? um, and then uh, <coughs> F, I, eh? C, I, J. So the, the, the supply chain team goals uh, uh, is to decide on a network design that maximize profit after taxes. So for the sake of simplicity, however, we assume that all demand must met and tax on earning are enough. So the model does focuses on minimizing the cost of meeting global demand. So it can be modified, however, to include profit and taxes. Uh, define the we can define as uh, following so variable like so. Okay, uh, y i. Eh? Uh, if uh, one if a plan is i is open uh, and zero otherwise okay and then uh, q uh, sorry x i j uh, the quantity shipped from plan i to uh, market j okay uh, 
and then the problem is then uh, formulated as the uh, you can see uh, the following mix integer program uh, this the uh, objective uh, maximize uh, <coughs> and the objective um, uh, function uh, minimize the total cost uh, I mean fix uh, plus variable of setup and operating the network okay and you can see from there uh, uh, in this one uh, okay um, as uh, that the constraint in this equation require that the demand of each regional market uh, be satisfied and then uh, the constraint uh, the second uh, one uh, you can see from there uh, state that no plant uh, can supply more than its capacity uh, <coughs> and then the constraint in the last equation enforces that uh, each plant is either uh, open uh, or close so the situation identifies the plan uh, that are to be kept open so their capacity and the allocation of regional demand to this plan So the model is solved using the solver tool in Excel. Uh, solver tool in Excel. You can see uh, uh, this uh, spreadsheet figure. Uh, so given the data, the next step in Excel is to identify cells corresponding to each decision variable. So as shown in this figure, uh, uh, 5.4 figure, you can see. Uh, uh, cells B14 uh, F18 uh, uh, B14 uh, uh, F18 uh, right <coughs> so that, that's the one as uh, correspond to the decision variable X Y J and so determine uh, the amount produced in a supply region and ship to the uh, region and then so uh, uh, few uh, cells uh, contain the decision variables uh, let's include of this as uh, the constraint cell and objective function as shown in this uh, figure 5.5 uh, 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 constraints uh, contain the, these uh, cells uh, before contain the facility uh, constraint in equations uh, and say, uh, cells uh, before contains the uh, demand constraint so with the, within the solver parameter dialog box uh, simply uh, we can solve uh, uh, to obtain the optimal solution okay this uh, can be solved uh, through uh, solver parameter uh, dialog box okay. Okay, during the phase 3 uh, uh, you can see from the uh, previous uh, figure 5.2 uh, you can look at backs 
again with after this a manager identify potential location in each region where the company has decided to locate a plant so as a pre uh, preliminary step, step the manager needs to identify uh, the geographic location where uh, potential sites may be considered so gravity location models can be useful when identifying suitable geographic location within a region so gravity models are used in to find location that minimize the cost of transporting raw material from suppliers and finish good to the market so okay. <coughs> see clear and full slide in uh, the slide I will share later yeah. <coughs> okay this are gravity allocation model So gravity model assume that uh, both uh, the market and supply sources can be located as a grid uh, a point uh, on a plate. So all distance are located, calculated as the ge geometric distance between two points on the plane. So this model also assume that the transportation cost grows linearly with the quantity ship. Okay. You can see the next step uh, in is uh, to invoke a solver that a solver uh, data or solver within the solver parameter dialog uh, box in uh, C. You can see in Figure 5.8 now uh, the following information is entered to represent the problem. Uh, okay, uh, set a uh, cell B19 uh, equal to select mean by changing variable cell uh, B16 to B17 selects uh, uh, non-linear and click on the solve button. The optimal solution is uh, in is written in uh, cell uh, B16 uh, and B17 uh, to be uh, 100 uh, uh, sorry 681 and uh, 882 respectively. Okay, and then so the manager does identify the coordinate x and y. Uh, that means uh, 800, uh, 681 and 882 as the location of the factory that minimize cost uh, okay uh, that means uh, the total cost uh, from a map these coordinates are close to the border between uh, North uh, Carolina uh, and Virginia yeah. so this uh, uh, pro precise coordinate provided uh, by the gravity model uh, may not correspond to a feasible location though the manager should look for desirable sites close uh, to the optimal coordinate that have the required infrastructure as well as the appropriate worker skill available So this uh, the gravity model uh, can also uh, be solved using this 
uh, following it uh, iterative uh, procedure okay first one that's uh, for each supply source or market uh, and where and evaluate the end as defined in the question okay so obtain a new location x and y for the facility okay? uh, where x is equal to all of this yeah? so if the new location x and y is almost the same as x and y stop otherwise set x and y equal to x and, and, and y uh, apostrophe comma and go back to the step one yeah. and then during uh, phase four okay uh, a manager you can refer back to the figure 5.2 uh, and so previous in previous slide a manager decide on the location and capacity allocation for each facility so besides locating the facility a manager also decide how market are allocated to uh, facilities so this allocation must account for customer service or constraint in terms of response time so the demand allocation decision can be altered on a regular basis as cost change and market evolve when designing the network both location and allocation decision are made, are made jointly okay. uh, this optimization model eh? optimization model in this uh, phase 4 eh? optimal demand location do the optimal demand location Okay, management since uh, management executive at both uh, maybe and company A or company B have decided to merge uh, the two company into single entity uh, what you can uh, see for example of here uh, uh, telecom optic uh, or uh, become a telecom optic okay. maybe a uh, telecom one uh, from and high high optic uh, become a telecom optic as a merger okay. so management believe that significant benefit will result, will result if uh, the two network are merged appropriately okay. so the telecom optics will have five uh, factories uh, from which to work to serve a sick market okay. so management is debating whether all five factories are needed so it has uh, a sign uh, uh, supply chain uh, team to study the network for combined company and identify the plants that uh, could be a uh, shutdown so as you can see from this uh, figure uh, 5.9 okay, uh, you can see from this figure 5.9 uh, this is the first step in the setting up the solver model it is to enter the cost demand and capacity information uh, is shown in this figure 5.9 so the fit cost uh, fi for the five plant i entered in cell h4 to h8 uh, so the capacities uh, k i of the five plants are entered in cells uh, i4 to i8 and the variable cost from each plant to each uh, C demand city uh, cij uh, entered in cell b4 to g8 and the demand uh, uh, dj out of uh, of the seed market entered in cell b9 to g9 so next uh, corresponding to variable uh, to decision variable uh, xij and yi uh, cell 
B14 to G18 and H or 14 to H18 respectively are assigned uh, as shown in this uh, figure. Initially, all variables are set to be uh, 0. Capacitated uh, plan model, question model as well. This is uh, the next step. Huh? Uh, to construct a cell for each of the constraints in uh, equation that we discussed before. So the constraint cell are shown in this figure uh, 5.10 uh, cell B22 to B26 uh, contain the capacity constraint in equation uh, where whereas a cell B29 to G29 contain the demand constraint uh, in the equation uh, 5.2 before. So the cell, uh, the cell uh, B29 uh, corresponds to the demand constraint to the market in Atlanta. So the constraint in cell B22 correspond to the uh, capacity constraint for the factory in Baltimore. So the capacity constraint require that the cell value be greater than or equal uh, to zero. Uh. Whereas the demand constraint require the cell value to be equal to zero. Okay. okay, and then the uh, objective function measure the total fixed and variable cost of the supply chain network and is evaluated in uh, cell B32. Uh, the next step is to invoke. Uh, Solver as shown in uh, this figure 5.11. So within the solver, the global uh, the goal uh, is to maximize the total cost. Maximize the total co uh, cost in uh, cell B22 before. So the variable uh, are in the cells B14 and H14. And then within the solver parameter dialog box, uh, uh, select uh, simplex LP and uh, click on the solve to obtain the optimal uh, solution as shown in figure 5.12 here. So from this figure, yeah, the supply chain team uh, concludes. Uh, supply chain team uh, concludes that it is uh, optimal to telecom optic to close the plant in the Salt Lake City and Wichita right so while keeping the plants in Baltimore uh, Cheyenne and Memphis open so the total monthly cost of this network and operating is uh, 47 million eh? so this uh, cost represents saving of about 3 million per month compared this is the situation with telecom uh, one and high optic eh? operate separate uh, supply chain network. So in some cases, uh, companies want to design supply chain network in which a market is supplied from one, from maybe uh, only one factory, okay, single uh, or refer to as a single resource. So companies may impose this constraint because it's lower the complexity of coordinating the network and require less uh, flexibility from each facility. 
So the plants location model discussed earlier uh, need some modification to accommodate this uh, constraint. So in case in that case the decision variable, uh, the decision variable uh, are, def are redefined uh, as uh, you can see from here y uh, i uh, one if a factory i is open uh, or ten otherwise. Okay, x y i j equal to one if market j is supplied by a factory i eh, or zero otherwise. Okay. So the form uh, the problem is formulated as the uh, following integral uh, program eh, uh, subject to uh, following uh, equation. Eh. So the constraint equation in this eh, the first uh, equation you can see. Eh, uh, and uh, the last equation uh, enforce that each market is uh, supplied by exactly one factory so we do not describe the solution of the model in excel because it's very it is very similar to the model discussed earlier so the optimal network with a single source for telecom optic is shown in the table before okay if single sourcing is required uh, it is important uh, optimal for telecom optic to close the factories in baltimore and uh, chain so this is uh, different between the result uh, in uh, this one okay So in this uh, table, you can see uh, uh, the monthly cost uh, of operating the network in table 5.4 is uh, 40, uh, 49 million, you see, uh, 49 plus million. So this cost about 2.3 uh, million higher than the cost of the network in uh, figure before. And uh, the, in which a single sourcing was not required. So the supply chain team doesn't conclude that single uh, sourcing at about 2.3 million per month in to the cost uh, of the supply chain network although it's make coordination easier and require less flexibility from the plant So we consider a supply chain in which suppliers send material to factories that supply warehouse uh, that uh, sub, uh, supply warehouse that uh, supply market. So as shown in this figure, you can see uh, 5.13 uh, uh, location and capacity location uh, capacity allocation decision must be made for both uh, factories and warehouse. So multiple warehouse may use uh, may be used to satisfy demand at the market and multiple factories may be used uh, to replenish uh, a warehouse it is also assumed that a uh, unit have been appropriately adjusted such that one unit of input supply uh, source uh, produce one unit of the finished product okay but uh, this model uh, need uh, this uh, following input uh, and uh, it means a number of uh, market or demand eh? right and then uh, what is it okay uh, number uh, and number of potential factory location uh, number of uh, number of supplier uh, number of potential warehouse location eh? uh, demand annual demand for customer Okay, sorry. 
so we need that uh, this uh, following uh, model needs this kind uh, this all uh, input eh? <coughs> So the goal is to identify plant and warehouse uh, location as well as quantities shipped uh, between various points. So that's a max minimize the total fixed and variable cost. Uh. So define the following decision variable. Okay. Okay. <coughs> the following variables is uh, y, i, uh, y, e, y, e, j, uh, x, i, e, and x, h1. Problem is formulated as the following in the in the program. And uh, we put that as a subject to uh, this equation. Eh? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, okay, six, seven. Yeah, the first equation uh, constraints uh, specify the total amount shipped from supplier uh, cannot exceed the supply capacity okay. so the model discussed uh, discuss earlier can be mod modified uh, to allow uh, direct shipment between factories and market so all the models discussed previously can also be modified to accommodate uh, economies of scale in production transportation and battery cost however this requirement make the model more difficult uh, to solve so network design model should be structured such that the resulting supply chain network maximize profit after tariff and taxes while meeting a customer a service requirement so the model discussed earlier can be modified to maximize uh, profit accounting for uh, tax uh, even when revenues are in different currencies. So if uh, RJ uh, is the revenue from selling one unit in, in uh, market J. So the objective function of the capacitated uh, plant location model uh, can be modified like this. So manager should keep uh, the following uh, issues in mind when making network decision, uh, design uh, network design decision for supply chain. <coughs> the first one we uh, have uh, our manager must uh, do not underestimate the lifespan of facilities. It is important to think through the long-term consequences of facility decision because uh, facilities last a long time and have an enduring impact on a, a firm's performance. So my manager, so that's why manager must consider not only future demand and cost but also scenarios in which technology may change. Otherwise, a facility may become useless uh, within a few years. Okay. And then the second one that uh, manager must consider uh, do not gloss over the cultural implication. Do not uh, gloss over the cultural implication. So, network design decision regarding a facility location and facility role have a significant impact on the culture of each facility and the firm. So the culture at the facility will be influenced by other facilities in its vicinity. So next work a designer can use this in fact to influence the role of the new facility and the focus of people working there. Okay. And manager must not uh, uh, ignore uh, quality of life issue, quality of uh, life issue. Okay. Okay, the quality of life at, at selected facility location has a significant impact actually 
on uh, performance because it influence the available workforce uh, and its morale so in many instances a, a firm may be better off selecting a higher cost location if it provide a much better quality of life uh, right and then so uh, manager also must focus on tariff and tax incentive when locating facilities uh, manager making facility location decision should uh, consider tariff and tax incentive carefully when considering international location it is uh, astounding uh, how often tax incentive drive the choice of location often overcoming all uh, of the other cost uh, factors combined right <coughs> so in summary of this uh, chapter actually we try to understand the role of uh, network design in supply chain that means Network design decisions includes uh, identifying facility roles, location and cap facilities, uh, uh, capabilities, uh, allocating a market to be served by different uh, facilities. So this decision defines the physical constraint within which the network must be operated as market condition change. So good network design decision increase uh, supply chain profit. The second one that we want to achieve is to identify the factor influencing supply chain network uh, design decision eh? okay and then develop a framework for making network uh, design decision that means the goal of network design to maximize the supply chain long-term profitability the process start by defining the supply chain strategy which must be aligned with the competitive strategy of the firm and then so use optimizing uh, optimization okay for facility location and uh, capacity uh, allocation decision okay so the gravity allocation model identify a location that minimize inbound and outbound eh, transportation cost so they are very simple to implement uh, do not uh, uh, account for other important costs a network optimization model can include uh, contribution margins uh, taxes uh, tariff and so on yeah. okay until uh, so up until now i think uh, that's all for the topic that we want to discuss for uh, chapter five okay thank you very much for your attentions and see you again